someone who understands that dynamic better than just about anyone joins us now. It's a privilege to bring in Congressman Jamie Raskin of Maryland, who is, of course, a key member of the House January 6th Select Committee, played a major role in those blockbuster January 6th hearings. Here's just one of those moments. American carnage. That's Donald Trump's true legacy. His desire to overthrow the people's election and seize the presidency interrupted the counting of electoral college votes for the first time in American history, nearly toppled the constitutional order, and brutalized hundreds and hundreds of people. But the crucial thing is the next step. What this committee, what all of us will do to fortify our democracy against coups, political violence, and campaigns to steal elections away from the people. Joining us now, Congressman Jamie Raskin. Uh, Congressman, your, your thoughts, your reaction to this filing? Well, it's an extraordinary filing because it fills in a thousand details um, of what exactly the plan was to overthrow the 2020 presidential election. And um, it goes meticulously state by state explaining um, the defendant, Donald Trump's various calls into state election officials and Republican um, officials in order to get them to set aside the real popular election. And remember, the legal frame for this is that Jack Smith is showing that Donald Trump was not acting like a president of the United States trying to faithfully execute the laws. It's not as if he was calling any place other than states where he lost. It's not as if he was calling any election officials other than Republican election officials that he thought he could browbeat into um, caving into him. Um, and he was literally fabricating claims and evidence as he went. And all of these people would say, well, send us the evidence. And then they never sent them any evidence to the point where some of the people on Trump's team said, stop calling us. We don't have any evidence. There's nothing there. And um, the various election officials just were reporting there's no evidence. There's not a page of evidence. There's nothing there. So uh, a lot of this was done by the January 6th committee, but there's a lot of new stuff in there. And we learn a lot more about uh, the plan to try and coerce Vice President Mike Pence to step outside of his constitutional role and just declare Donald Trump the winner. This was something that seemed new to me, not just returning or rebuffing electoral college votes to the state legislatures, but just declaring that these counterfeit electors were real and declaring Trump the winner, which was apparently their first foray into the lawlessness of January 6th. They wanted just to get uh, Pence to do this. And then you can see the rage that they then instilled in the mob, which was chanting, hang Mike Pence, hang Mike Pence, when he wouldn't step outside of his constitutional role. That, of course, blends into now the presidential campaign, as J.D. Vance is saying, he would have done what Mike Pence refused to do. I mean, the reason why Mike Pence is not on the ticket is because he refused to give in to Donald Trump's orders to steal the election. But J.D. Vance is saying he would gladly have done what Pence honorably refused to do as he kept his oath of office. Congressman, one of the pieces of information that we learned in this filing that, that we didn't know before is what it was like in the room or on the call between Pence and Trump. And what's amazing is how fragile Trump is in, in terms of how, how Pence testifies that he talked to him. Um, it's, it's almost soothing phrases like it's not a defeat. It's an intermission. You can run again in 2024. The, the way movies depict um, hostage negotiators um, speaking to hostage takers. In this case, the hostage was the country, um, the democracy. I wonder what you make of all the ways um, Mike Pence tried to gently coax his friend um, to sort of put down um, yeah. this, this threat. Well, there's something poignant about it, psychologically speaking. Um, every bully, of course, is operating on a complete bundle of insecurities, as Donald Trump was. And Mike Pence was trying to ease him off of the ledge and say, you know, you can run again in 2024. This can be an intermission, a respite. It can be a break. Then you can come back and do it. He was trying to psychologically condition him to understand what everybody was telling him 
from the Attorney General of the United States to the White House counsel to people in the campaign, which is that he had lost the election. And there are numerous indications in the filing that Trump understood he lost the election, but still he wanted to perpetrate the fraud. But of course, constitutionally speaking, legally speaking, um, Donald Trump was just setting himself at odds with the legal order. He set himself at odds with the constitutional order. And everything he was trying to do here was to commit a series of crimes to overthrow an election that Joe Biden had won by more than 7 million votes, 306 to 232 in the Electoral College, which happened to be the same margin by which Trump had beat Hillary Clinton in the Electoral College in 2016, a margin that Trump had declared an absolute landslide then. So it was very clear what was going on. Um, Donald Trump clearly had an intent to set aside what he knew to be the lawful presidential result. And then he mobilized this oddball assortment of lawyers. At one point, they're described as um, the bar scene from Star Wars <laughs> by one of the participants, um, and mobilized them to go out and tell lies and make fraudulent representations in court. Most of them have been sanctioned in court. I think uh, Rudy Giuliani was just permanently disbarred by the Washington, D.C. bar, but there have been sanctions all over the country against them because while you can get away with lying in public in politics, the Supreme Court has said that that kind of lying is protected by the First Amendment. In court, it's not. You're speaking under oath or you're speaking as an officer of the court. And that's why Rudy Giuliani, all the way down, these people have faced all kinds of uh, sanctions for what they did.